Dear Captain, Terran is Imba. Their advantages in strategy choosing in the early game and the ability to turtle since mid game is insane. In this game I opened up with a Stargate, which in my opinion would be a good reactive call against Terrans who walled off the ramp. I scouted and defended the early Reaper slash Hellion harass with acceptable losses and cleared out the following mind drop with only a single worker loss. Despite my huge lead in the early game, I barely survived the tank push, but I thought to myself, hmm, at least I survived and the game was somewhat playable. We then went into a macro game, some fights here and some mind drops there. Situation was overall even for both of us. I basically had map hack vision and map control since mid game. Then the devil came, lips plus tanks. It was impossible to break through a Terran who decided to just turtle at home with this composition. My attempt of prism attack and transition into air also seemed futile. Once maxed out with full upgrades, Terran just moved across the map and brutally executed me. Please enlighten me, Captain. Is Terran Imba, or do I just suck? Sincerely, Hitoa. A Protoss player from North America with 4700 MMR, asking me whether Terran is Imba or if he sucks. Well, Hitoa, we're here to find out, my friend. 4700 MMR Protoss player. Now I am excited for this because the beauty of 4.7k is that everything kind of, you know, it, it kind of just starts to work. You know, people have, have real build orders. They might even know how to build a Reaper wall. Oh, this is, mm, I, I'm really looking forward to this. PVT in particular, because there's so many cool decisions. There's so many nice build orders. Oh, oh this is gonna be a game. For the people who just missed that, we saw some nice probe stacking here in, in, in the middle part. This probe, he, he was gonna get blocked, uh, but then he pulled it back up and then pew, popped it back down so that the, the probes don't bounce around. Because the one thing you don't want is bouncing probes. That's absolutely terrible. And as I say that, we, <laughs> we have some uh, probe bouncing going on. Hey, not not the greatest pro micro. Wait, he's trying, you know, he's trying. This is 4700 really is, is kind of on the edge where you should, like, you should be doing it, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. It's kind of comparable to shying your, to, your, your to shying, tying your shoelaces. You know, if you're 11, you really should be capable of tying your shoelaces. Now, personally, my mom still did it till I was 17, but for most other people, you know, 10 really is the hard cut. If you don't know how to tie your own shoelaces yet when you're 10 years old, there, there probably is something not entirely correct there. Um, and it's the same. For, I feel like 5k really is the hard cut. From there on out, your probes in the first two minutes should be, you know, bouncing back and forth it, uh, as little as possible, really. It, no bouncing over here, you know. It's no, not a bouncy house. It's a freaking mineral line. We put in the work here, you clowns. That's what we do. Um, let's have a look at the theory, though, because this is going to be... The scout. The scouts. Okay. Scouts a full wall. Leaves his probe upstairs till 148. Now, why do I like that so much? Because at 148, the marine is supposed to pop out. So this Protoss player here, this 4700 barcode, knows the marine timings. And as a result, knows that now it's a Reaper first and doesn't need to rush out a battery really quick in the natural. Because if the first unit is a marine, it could have been a second barracks proxy with a marauder. Now, that battery is not necessary yet. You can build it after you throw down your tech. Which, I love the fact that that got scouted. I love that this probe stayed up just a tiny bit longer. God, high level games are so much so much more fun to watch than these, 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 these clowns that don't even know the first three minutes properly. Come on, get it together. Pops back in as well here, look at this. With the probe, sees the reactor. And now this is actually kind of difficult. What, what, what do you do here? You scout the reactor. That can mean two things. It either could mean that your opponent, the Terran, is going for like some type of mine drop or a tank attack. And it just wants to produce very fast Marines. However, this Terran run a mock is going for a really quick triple Reaper, double Hellion build. Okay. And this is the most aggressive build that Terran can do. There's, there's almost no build order that hits harder than this at this point. So according to the Protoss theory books that I've read in my time, you need to throw down a battery. If you see Reaper into reactor, you still need a battery 
on the low ground. It is, it is absolutely necessary. Yes. Yes, it is. Second gateway here. What, what is this second gateway going to do for you? This should be a battery here, my dear friend. Warp gate is 18 seconds in. Are you... Are, are, Am I really going to believe that you will build, slow build a unit from this gateway, pre-warp gate? You and I both know that this isn't true. No, this money should have been spent into a freaking battery. You know it, I know it, um, but you didn't do it. And, and you're getting the battery, but it's a little bit too late. Well, it is fairly, actually, this, this battery is at the perfect timing to be completely useless. This is like taking an anti-conception pill after you got pregnant. It is too early for your next kit and too late for your first. Hey, it, if you were gonna get tank pushed, this is about 45 to 50 seconds too fast. If you're being double reaper hellion or triple reaper double hellion, it is too late. So there's literally no purpose for the timing of this battery. It had to be earlier so that it finishes at about 320, 325, or uh, it should be way later where you're ready for a tank push. Right now you scouted something and responded completely incorrect. Now, the damage that you took is actually pretty big. You mentioned in your form, let me actually, you know, let me quote the form here today. I'm feeling like quoting. Despite my huge lead in the early game, I barely survived the tank push. Huge lead in the early game. You're up two workers against a Terran with two orbital commands. My dear friend, at this moment, you're behind. You're not ahead at all. Your opponent has really quick tech. Like, what is it really that you have? You're... Oh, late Robo. Ooh, this is a sexy build order. Poo! Sheesh! Ooh, I do like the build. But you're not that far ahead, is what I'm trying to say. You should be up six, seven workers. But because you lost five, that's not quite the case. You do end up getting one, which is, well, a woohoo for you. Uh, then you fly your Oracle into a mine, which is woohoo for the Terran. And I think you managed to clear one more. I'm not sure what that was. Was it a mule that just exploded or was it an SEV that you killed? Well, whatever it was, this is not really that great of an early game for you. Let's just get that out there first. Okay, this you're you're playing, I guess, Phoenix Colossus after double Oracle. Your row obey is not going to start until freaking 5 minutes and 20 seconds in. That is about a minute later than we usually would see. Your third base is very quick, which is cool. So if you survive, it's not that big of an issue. But this is a this is an extremely greedy build order. Um, and I don't really think you're ahead at all. I don't really... Yeah, I don't think so. Whatsoever. Um, there's one Phoenix out. You are fairly blind, but you're keeping the Phoenix at home, which I like. I think that's a good call. I mean, if your opponent... just if your opponent had actually pushed out with like a cyclone, a tank, uh, the medevac and like 12 marines, your third base would be toast, right? Let's just take a look at the situation. Triple adapt, Phoenix Oracle. Like, how are you going to hold this? You don't have a battery, you don't have a pylon here, no immortal on the way. Everything you do from now on, on this game, in this game, please do know that this was an illegitimate game. You should have lost already if your opponent had actually just pushed out at any point. So you're living on borrowed time here you know you're not supposed to be alive anymore it's an interesting way of dealing with it but it seems to be working out gonna drop it Ooh, nice pickup run and mock look at you but this is a fun game so far this is, the, the, the phoenix micro has not been brilliant we haven't produced a worker during this mind drop but it, is, it has been a pretty cool game i like this kind of chaotic all right How's the tech looking? Where are we at with the Robobay? Robobay is now done. Colossus hasn't started yet. You're floating 800 minerals for uh, no real reason. And in order to spend those minerals, you now add four gateways. Now, I, I'm, I'm conflicted here. I, I really am kind of conflicted. Usually I say, if you're floating money, add production. But we're now at an MMR where just blindly adding production like a chicken without a hat isn't necessarily always good i want you to think about what you're adding like if you're floating 1k and your master's one or you're on the the edge of grand master like a solid response is not just always adding six gateways you know like we probably would have wanted a forge or a twilight a bit quicker and maybe get a battery or a cannon and spread out some more pylons you use it in a different way maybe go up to six gas I don't think that 
going up to eight gates actually really does something for you and i do believe right now you're at the skill level where you should be capable of spending that money in a more productive way it's specifically in in better tech your forge and twilight is insanely late like we're, we're eight minutes into a game and you don't have a forge yet you don't have a twilight the only reasonable follow-up from here is going to be like an, an eight gate phoenix stalker colossus all in which used to be really popular in 2017 and hasn't been very popular for the past six years because it sucks um yeah i i don't recommend that we're now going into forge twilight it is just really really late defensive setup should be good enough there's infinite marines and there's two tanks raven might be annoying but with a super battery and some good positioning i, I do believe you should be capable of dealing with this now there's an interesting move almost snipe the raven i was gonna flame you for it but this almost worked out now what do you really want to do at this point with the phoenixes i think ideally you'd be picking off reinforcements like these marines these mines should not be allowed to join in um your opponent is going for a tank push which means that it's really unlikely that he's going to drop into your main base with the tanks he can't just leave those tanks alone they'll die so actually cutting off reinforcement with phoenixes as you continue having vision with revelation on your opponent's army i think is the correct move here I don't always think that is the correct move. Sometimes it is really risky to send the Phoenixes across the map or to pick off reinforcements because if they have three, four medevacs and Marine Marauder, uh, they'll pick up, go into your main. But because you have constant vision with Revelation um, and because his army is basically pure Marine, if he does send medevacs into your main base, a single Colossi should be capable, a single Colossus should be capable of basically dealing with this. So I think the movement here of the Phoenix is trying to snipe the Raven is cool, but I think picking off the reinforcements would have been more consistent as a response, in my opinion. But I think if you ask multiple Protoss, they might give different answers to this. So I'm not going to go too hard on you for that, okay? I think we'll, we'll try to keep it fair. Well, just, I'm not quite sure what this is, but you did throw away a bunch of Zealots. I guess that's why you need the eight gates to throw away all these zealots now here comes the fight and you can't allow your opponent to take out your super battery so you need to defend this like this is a, this is an absolute key moment because here comes the unsiege now you need to jump ideally you have a guardian shield you don't this is this is go time this is go time yep and it is go time indeed okay single interference um, <laughs> uh gets used super battery gets activated as well we're gonna work this fight again because i saw something that some people would consider very interesting uh okay uh yeah I, you're, you're you should still be capable of holding uh this terran should go back home because i it's best you know the time is running out he, he's, he's done his damage should go home and macro is floating quite a bit oh i just want to analyze this fight so bad oh no oh this is a nice pickup going into the main all right i think we've waited long enough i i can't wait any longer now i just want to have a a quick look at the actual unit counts here okay a quick look at the actual unit counts before this fight commences Okay, when does it start? When does it start? 8, 850, I think, somewhere around that. Okay, here. What do we have? We have 36 Marines, and we have three Marauders. One of those Marauders is at home. So we have about 30 Marines over here. We have two tanks, and uh, we, have, we have two Marauders. Now, the Colossus ideally wants to fight the Marines, because the Colossus freaking eats Marines for breakfast, okay? It, it destroys it. Let's take a look at the one Colossus that is still allowed to attack. What does it do with it first? Three, four swipes. Just pay attention to this. So this Raven comes in, uses Interference Matrix on the one Colossus. Now have a look at this guy. Like, first of all, both of them at this point, we're just shooting the one Marauder here that was in front. It's difficult to see. If we if we do some, some nice zooming, you see, this Marauder is really getting it. So we get that one Interference Matrix. Look at this Marauder just getting blasted. That is like four swipes on the marauders legitimately four swipes if those would have been targeted on the marines half of the marines would be gone right now now what makes this so hilarious for me is the fact that there was only two marauders and you managed to pick them out now it doesn't stop there because look at this colossus okay he's going he's going and he, he gets this clump of marines gets this clump retargets moves back and forth and where does oh 
Where does he go back to? Well, first the mine. I'm not quite sure why that is. And then goes back to the freaking Marauder. Finds the second Marauder. Like, this guy is to be the most... If you were to just micro at random, it would be less likely to kill to pick the Marauders out of this. You, this Protoss has to be the unluckiest Protoss. Poor micro, but also unlucky. Because usually if you A move, at least you're going to get some amount of Marines here. It feels like the Marauder just, <laughs> just keeps tanking in front. You know how in the... When you buy, like, you get, like, a prescription medicine for something. Uh, you know, because you have low IQ, for example. They give you a prescription medicine, and on the little the little paper, the little information leaflet next to it, it says, like, there's a one in five million chance that tomorrow you wake up and uh, you'll start growing until your skin turns pink and you make an oink oink noise. You know, look at that and go, like, eh, what are the chances, you know? If I am this Protoss player, and it says that on my freaking medicine prescription, I'm not taking it because you're waking up as a pig the day after 100 percent this freaking guy managed to pick out two marauders in an army of freaking 37 units and uh, this is, is phenomenal stuff absolutely phenomenal stuff it does have a fort base though um still no upgrades uh, with all that behind us we still actually have a game yeah we're still in the game uh it's not looking great because you're you're down in upgrades um but and you lost all your phoenixes as well as your oracles but your colossi account uh, is intact which is huge if you lose your colossus you, usually you just lose the game you actually have decent infrastructure because you well you started that party fairly early and you're adding a second forge which i like you're adding in cannons now so from this point on out i'm actually liking the moves that you're making i'd love to see just 10 12 13 workers being added i want to see pylon over here i want to see a probe or zealot a pylon over here i just want you to have map control because isn't that what you said in your in your iolis form as well let, let me quote him again look at this i basically had map hack vision and map control since mid game let's just hope that this guy never becomes an eye doctor just <laughs> you have a guy coming in can't see anything 2020 looks good to me next is like mate you legitimately have no vision right now on the map don't talk about don't talk about vision here. You're practically blind. This is nothing. It's all dark on the map. Maybe he believes that if you remove like the if, if you've scouted a location that you can see it forever. He doesn't understand how the fog of war quite works. You know, how you have like the, the super dark areas and then just the, the kind of shadowy areas. Like, well, I I've spotted most of the map. You would have been a great explorer. A Columbus uh, eat your heart out. This guy's coming for you, my friend. Like is it a good explorer, but not great when it comes to map prompt. Oh, actually, oh, I spoke too soon, didn't I? Oh, no, I look like the idiot. Oh, this is a nice ring. <clears throat> this actually is a really r nice ring of vision. It took you about a minute, but uh, it is pretty. I take it back. I, my little jokes and my pokes. Yeah, no, this is nice. This this actually, it, this is good. Um, But the one thing we shouldn't forget about vision is that... It, vision isn't just important to have so you can react uh when you're being threatened but it's also important to set up your own attacks so ideally i would like to have a couple of zealots over here or a couple of zealots over here i'd want to maybe have a prism right now in the in the dark space i think something that a lot of protosses underestimate is how useful prism speed is after you finish your thermal lens your robo bay most of the time is going to be well not doing very much of anything i think getting prism speed and a prism after triple colossus especially when you're playing phoenix colossus often is a very very good call one of the things that is really difficult with heavy colossi armies is to move out on the map and a prism in your opponent's base definitely tends to help with that this is a good fight as well for you by the way this is a really good fight you're freaking destroying your opponent run amok by the way i think is a He's a cannibal. I was going to say he's a 5300 Terran player. That's Grandmaster. But he also just killed one of his own tanks. What was that? He's going into very quick Liberators. This is not very good. Um, as a strategy. Like, it is annoying to play against. This heavy turtle. But it's not good as a strategy. And I'm about to explain why. One of the, the, the biggest advantages that Terran has over Protoss in the mid game. Is that they can have map control. They can move around the map with uh, either ghost viking armies or with like big medevac splits. 
having map control, quickly expanding, maybe even getting a bit of an eco lead. The moment you set yourself up defensively with liberators, you're basically giving the Protoss a free pass to go up to 85 workers, five, six bases, infinite gateways. And basically what you do as a Terran, you're telling the Tolls, hey, I'm going to fight you later on in the game, but it's going to be a single fight. Okay, that's it. If the Terran wins that fight, Terran most likely wins the game. If the Protoss can force the Terran to stay at home and maybe pick off units on the side the entire time, Protoss can have such an insane infrastructure. However, despite the complete map control that is, is basically here for our barcode player, our Protoss, he isn't really using it. He's just staying at home. He's defending against an army that shouldn't be allowed to really move on the map. I mean, with this many siege units, you, you simply can't be competitive out on the map. He has full vision everywhere as well run by setup like this setup is perfect but the worker count right now is pretty much even and if you include the mules we actually have worse income right now for the protos than for the terran that should never be the case while this is happening though the protos is stacking up into stargate and wants to get dts out so our protos is pretending like he has superior economy and i think this is this is copying you know but it's copying incorrectly. Our Protoss player has seen other Protosses do this. Like, oh, DT run buys and prisms in the main and carriers and many gateways. You know, this type of stuff. Except he forgot to, to copy a very important thing. And that's gathering the resources for them. You need to be at a superior eco count at that point. You can't be throwing away massive amounts of units if you have inferior economy. Then you need to trade better than your opponent. It's one or the either you're trading better or you have better eco and then you can afford to trade poorly. But right now, I don't actually think you have a better army and you're most likely also not going to be trading. Well, you, just, you have no... Let me pause so I can try this sentence again, but slowly. <laughs> you don't have better eco and I also don't think you're going to be capable of having a very efficient fight. Well, that wasn't so hard now, was it, Kevin? That's the problem with these prescription medicines. It says... One in 10,000, uh, your brain becomes a little bit scrambled, and here I am. I thought I'd take the risk. Uh, tough luck for me. Triple Stargate's on the way. See, once again, this is way too much infrastructure for 69 workers. Nice. But he has no cash in the bank. This is fine if you're, if you're 86 workers, and you've been mining from 10, 12 gas. You have cannons everywhere. This is another thing, by the way, that I would like to, to add on to it. If you have 85 workers, it allows yourself to build cannon walls, which can win time, which can help you win a fight. And if you only need to win a single fight, which is what you will need to do later on against this Terran army, uh, because the Terran eco also sucks, then yeah, having a little bit of extra time, allowing you to rebuild your army if you've lost it on your opponent's side of the map is absolutely fantastic. Or it maybe allows you to go for a massive DT run by, and then the cannons can buy a lot of time. Right now, you can't really build a cannon wall of 10 cannons. You can barely afford these two cannons. Like this is, it is painful to watch. You don't have good upgrades for your air yet either. You're transitioning into carriers right now, but if you're, if you're transitioning into carriers, you need a lot of time and you need to buy time. Right now, you're, you're not in a position to buy time. You're on your own side of the map. Yes, you have great vision, but you have no cannons. You have no counterattack set up. Oh, actually, double prism is an okay counterattack. There's like no DTs roaming around, which I think is, is one of the, the key things you need to do if you're playing a heavy disruptor stalker style against liberators. The moment your opponent moves out, you go in with DT, snipe a base. Then you force the Terran to either all in into you or to go back home. And if they go back home, you can recall the DTs or blink away. That really is how the style works, but you're not really doing very much of any of that. I love this double prism though. This is really cool. I wish more Protoss players would do this, especially higher level tosses. The thing I don't like as much though is that both prisms are empty. I would love for the second prism to have four zealots in it. And I also think going up to like 12 to 16 gateways would be good, given that you actually have the money for it, but which you still don't because you literally haven't built a single extra worker in the past 35 minutes. This is also ridiculous, obviously. Like, this was not a timing to go in. It, you, your timing is just off, okay? Let, let, let me just take a look at this. So, what do we have here? We have these two prisms. Observer spots a very minor move out, okay? This is, this is like hardly any army. 
you can't go in then saying, okay, this is 40, maybe 45 supply that's moving out. You can't expect there to be nothing defensively. You could make this play, go in with these prisms, if your main army is threatening something else at the same time. So if you're threatening this third base or you're threatening this fourth base, this double prism move at this moment would be great, but your main army is threatening nothing. So you're sending in your one potential counterattack that you have and you're wasting it for nothing. Absolutely nothing. You're doing, you're achieving nothing with it. Congratulations. Your opponent didn't even really need to return back home. He's going to because he feels bad for you. It's like, well, those prisms are completely useless. Let me pretend like I care. And he steams back home to his third. Yeah. I don't know why, but it happened. It's like, there was plenty of units here. You, this is completely useless. Now, your opponent is getting closer and closer to the move out timing. Well, actually, I think we are a little bit past the move out timing. And right now, after losing both of your prisms, you have absolutely nothing that can counterattack. And thus your opponent can move across the map. Oh, you see it with a zealot. That's great for you. What can you do? You can only go for a full on base trade. That's the, literally the only thing you can do right now. Nothing else. Um, and your opponent says, well, that's great, great and all those, those full on base trade, but I can actually defend with two, three liberators here. I have a couple of Vikings behind it and I catch your, your carries in the middle of the map. Like I can still start setting up on your side of the map and you're going to be forced back home right now and you're out of position. Look, boom. Great rotations here by the Terran, by the way. Really nice movement. This is really a masterclass in movement here out of it. Very well done. I loved how this looked. Very properly done. Nice scans as well now coming in. Oh, and there you are. The Terran basically gave you map control in the mid game. And the moment the Terran wanted it back, he took it. You know? This is like uh, giving your little cousin the GameCube controller that isn't plugged in. You know, yeah, you go. He lets you play. Yeah, I played Call of Duty for seven hours last night. Like, well... Sure, you had a great time. Say, so, this is nothing. He just gave it to you and pretended it was something, but it wasn't. He just wanted you to be happy with your stupid map control, and you didn't use it. Not one bit. And now he just rotates twice. You lose this base. Once again, he rotates to a different side. You now lose. Look at this. Look how he's cutting this up. This is, this is the difference here. 5,300 player, 4,700 player. Cuts off this area. Now, you might say, well, this isn't really even threatening this base. But it is threatening this base. So you will be forced to attack into this right now. You're forced into defending this base. So this looks stupid, and it is stupid. You probably still shouldn't just move into the Liberator. But I understand why you feel you have to. Because this base is now vulnerable. This Terran completely outplayed you. Holy crap. This is, is it well done by the Terran, honestly. It's nice. You lost five supply in that last fight. GG. I mean... You can't complain about a game like this because you weren't participating. It felt like you were beating the Terran, but the Terran was just giving you whatever he wanted you to have. And you had no clue what to do with it. You just had no clue. It's like your first time playing football. You're just fumbling the ball again and again. You're just Your opponent kept on handing it to you. It's like, yeah, give it to the idiot again. He'll fumble it. Like That was it. You had the most valuable resource in PvT, which is map control. And you also had vision, which often comes with map control. And you had no clue what to do with it. You, see, you, were, you were like uh, handed 50,000 bitcoins in, in, in 2012. And you lost the password. You know, this, is, this is what happened. You didn't know how to sell them. You know, flush them down the toilet. Oh, no clue what to do. This is nothing to do with imbalance, my friend. This is legitimately nothing. This is a very good game by the Terran, by the way. And I want to see more of this dude. Run amok. Not a bad player at all. Now, Terran, uh, Terran is not imbalanced. It is you, my dear friend. That sucked. And that is the way of the world. All right. I actually think that's going to be it for today's episode of uh, Is it Imba or do I suck? I, I do hope you had a good time. I hope you learned something as well. I always feel like that we learn a little bit more when we get these high level games. So if you're a higher level player, be sure to send it in. If you're a lower level player, be sure to also send it in. I do enjoy the you know, the Platinum Leaguers every now and again. Some bronzes in there. Oh yeah. All right, well, that's it. Uh, thanks so much for watching and uh, ciao, ciao.